Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Straight Talk for the Soul series, your vibrational, multidimensional vitamin for the body, mind, and spirit. I'm Carrie Murphy, your host, creator, and founder of this global broadcast and brilliant community of light. I want to extend a bright and a beautiful good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you tuning in from around the world. Welcome home, everybody. Welcome home, way showers, um, light workers, empaths, intuitives, healers, uh, co-creators, really, of this new paradigm on planet Earth. I'm so honored to have all of you with us today. Um, this is really a sacred space and a sanctuary to soothe your soul, to strengthen your spirit, and to provide insights and resources to support your expansion, your upliftment, um, and so much more. And so you may be wondering, what on earth is going on right now on our planet? Um, well, Peter Tung is here with me. We're going to address that today. We're going to lighten up together. Now is the time for... Uh, unity and for stepping into the roles that we designed for ourselves uh, in this lifetime. So um, it's time to boldly and confidently stay in our power and light and realize the freedom on the other side of this um, planetary pandemic. Um, this is the time that we've been really waiting for, uh, and it's the time to embody our radiance and shine through and beyond any any clouds of distortion or distraction or chaos in the outer world right now. So, again, thanks for joining us. I want to ask my favorite question, what is the best that could happen today? Well, again, with Peter Chung here, uh, it's going to be wonderful. Uh, every time Peter comes, it's uh, fun, enlightening, and informative. We'll be discussing the transformation of humanity that's clearly on the forefront of all of our minds and hearts right now. So we're also going to talk about how to stay calm through this, uh, these current global challenges, uh, what we can personally do to help the situation, uh, the best ways to protect ourselves from illness at this time, um, and an understanding of what this is leading to in our future. We're going to talk about the bigger picture, uh, what's going on behind the scenes, uh, the important stuff. And Peter will also be taking some live callers later if you have questions about the gene keys um, and how we can utilize the gene keys to navigate through these times. So a little bit more about Peter. Uh, he's been on a spiritual path for much of his life, early explorations of chemistry, and astrology quickly evolved into studies of alchemy and the afterlife. Over the years, he has gained much insight on humanity's innate ability to transform itself as well as the illusory veil that separates us from other dimensions. Uh, Peter offers Gene Key sessions. Uh, the Gene Keys take you on your own grail quest along the golden path to show you the key Gene Keys in your own unique hologenic, hologenetic profile. The journey reveals to you the shadow energies lurking in your unconscious that are waiting to be transmuted and transformed into your most powerful gifts um, or the divine essences that are at the core of your soul. This truly is a path to your enlightenment that only you can tread. The Gene Keys is a system based upon the link between the Chinese I Ching, the 64 hexagrams, and the 64 codons that make up our DNA. And we'll talk about that more in detail with Peter later. He was an educator for 30 years, a high school principal for 13 years. During that time, the Indigo children provided him with firsthand accounts of their spiritual experiences, as well as the limitations that they were facing uh, within the traditional school system. He was inspired by these people, these beautiful beings, and he left his career in formal education, and he turned his attention to walking his true spiritual path while helping others walk theirs. Now he counsels individuals and groups. Um, he has a very grounded, heart-centered approach to science and spirituality um, and offers a much-needed means for navigating life at this uh, potentially chaotic and confusing time. So it's truly an ideal time to have Peter here with me. Uh, so please join me in extending waves and waves of love and light and appreciation to Peter as I welcome him back to the show. So welcome back, my friend. Well, thank you, Carrie. It was a beautiful introduction. I really appreciate that. And I felt that wave of love coming too. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Important times, Peter, <laughs> right? Well, we are in peak times, actually, uh, intense energetic peak times. And so really, really important for everyone to understand where we are and why we are where we are. 
and where this is leading us. So it, it, the timing is divine, as you correctly said. Yes, divine timing having you here. Um, we're going to explore a lot of the layers of this. We're going to talk about the gene keys too, Peter. Um, so let's just start with the, the big question, what on earth is going on? Loaded question. It's a um, huge question. And what on earth is going on is, um, in the biggest picture of all, is this transformation of humanity from the old world to the new world. And it, the big surprise was how it's actually uh, been uh, instigated, how it's been catalyzed by this virus. Uh, but there is no doubt at all in my own research, my own knowing, that this is unfolding into a, an absolutely beautiful future in which we are going to live. We're going to move through this process while living on the planet into this beautiful golden age of peace that is coming. And what's really, really important for all of us to understand, all of the listeners, Carrie, you and, and me, is we have been prepared for this moment through eons of lifetimes. Mm -hmm. And everything that's happened to us in every lifetime, including being killed, maimed, tortured, um, experienced a wonderful experience, uh, healing journeys, all of it, all of it was a preparation for now. And so I really want to encourage uh, your listeners, our listeners today, to realize that we are here on the planet at this time because we are members of the transition team who are going to guide other people through this process from where we are now, which we might want to call the dark night of the soul, which is in the 36th dream key, which leads to this miracle. So in the biggest picture, let's look at it this way, that we chose to engage in this experiment where we were spiritual beings from other dimensions and we made this decision to come down into the densest possible medium that we could called planet Earth and see if we could come down as deep as you can into physical beingness and experience all of the despair and depravity that humanity has been able to cause on themselves and on the planet itself and still have this glimmer of light shining at the end of the tunnel and mm -hmm. begin to remember who we truly are, which are spiritual beings having this human experience. And the experiment could have failed. It could have gone down this dark, deep hole forever into the abyss. But we haven't. We've turned the corner. And enough of us on the planet, millions and millions of light workers on the planet, as all of this has unfolded, we have held our position and we've just connected deeply with source, connected with ourselves, connected with others. And this light is now glowing brighter and brighter on a, on a daily basis. I so feel it. It, is, it mm -hmm. is unstoppable. It is absolutely unstoppable. So the first thing is to reassure people that although it appears to be desperate at the moment, so long as we hold to our highest frequency, our highest truth, then this is all going to play out exactly the way it was planned to be. And the only thing that can stop that is for us to drop down into fear and lower our frequency. And I think from my perspective, I see this as a last-ditch effort by those trying yeah. to control the world to bring that fear on heavily. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's why it's so important for us to hold to our knowing and our truth as this unfolds. Yeah. So I hope that, that reassures all the listeners um, about what is actually going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last-ditch effort to elicit panic, um, well, especially through the mainstream media. And, you know, I'm so grateful, Peter, with the work you do, the work that we all do, you know, this is what we need to be listening to is this uplifting, reassuring information um, right now. And this is going to lead to the freedom that we intended for. So it's yeah. exciting, and I do feel the light. I mean, today, it, it just for me, I mean, I'm sure everybody goes through different waves right now. We're all riding different waves of uncertainty. But I feel so much strength in these um way shower communities um, and there's so much divine support right now as well Peter uh, which has um, 
really, really helped us right now because this could have been a lot worse and it's not going to be. Um, no, no, it's not. Um, okay. What else do you want to say regarding, um, the bigger picture, um, regarding the virus? Is there okay, anything so that get, you feel is Oh, significant? yeah. Let's get, let, let's get that out of the way fairly sure. quickly. Um, but I don't know if you, if people know this in general. Um, but this coronavirus um, was stolen from a, a research lab in Canada, actually, in 2019. And I don't know why this hasn't hit the main media. Well, I do I know. know. <laughs> but what it actually has hit our, our, our levels of media. Our, um... yeah, yeah. So what actually yeah. happened was this uh, first occurred back in 2012, interestingly, in Egypt, where this man got this virus, which who knows where it came from. And it was an unknown virus. And... Unknown viruses get sent to this very high secure research lab in Winnipeg in Canada uh, so that they can start looking into it and start uh, trying to work out exactly what it is. So in this lab in Winnipeg, there was a female Chinese doctor working with this virus. And in 2019, she stole it and she got caught and she got kicked out of Canada. And I don't know why this hasn't been reported. And where did she go to? She went to the equivalent research lab, which is in Wuhan in China. Mm -hmm. yeah, yep. So this virus, uh, whether it is man-made to begin with or whether it is an organic um, distortion, it certainly was being worked with by human beings. And then to um, confirm that, um, there's a guy called Charles Lieber, who is the head of, or was the head of the chemistry and biochemical department in Harvard University, he uh, was re arrested and put in jail because he had been receiving multi-million dollar benefits from uh, the Chinese government to share his knowledge of these viruses. And one of his um, cohorts was actually caught with 21 vials of substance, which has yet been, not yet been uh, identified as far as I know. Um, he got caught going through customs with these vials going into China. So this Charles Lieber was offered a, a one and a half million dollars to himself and fifty thousand dollars a month to set up this center in in in, in Wuhan, China. Mm -hmm. So this is biological warfare. You need to really understand that, and that's and that's what was being attempted. Now, what was the point of that? Well, Charles Lieber was actually supported by, sadly, the Gates Foundation, and I think you'll find that the most wealthy people on this planet have actually been working on lowering the population of the earth through vaccinations. Mm -hmm. And one of, the, one of the challenges here is they're going to come up with this vaccination for this virus, and then they, they could attempt to force people to have it. And I think people need to look very, very carefully into how this is all playing out mm -hmm. and, and, and recognize that there is a major dark shadow side to this that we need to be very, very aware of. So that's all I'm going to say on the dark side. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, Peter, yeah. um, your uh, voice is coming in and out. Um, it gets real clear and then a little muffled. I'm not sure what may be going on with the mic. Um, okay, well, I'll, I'll wanna... just change something there. Does that, does that sound better? I think so, so far. So far, so good. Okay. okay. So that's all I want to say on the dark side mm -hmm. and just to recognize that. Um, and there's more going on that I don't even know about, obviously, behind the scenes, but there's a lot going on. There's a major sort of final battle taking place. But the good news is it's, it's already game over. It's already lost from the dark side. So what we need to do is to hold to these highest frequencies. Now, I do want to get into the gene keys to explain some of the key elements of this. And this takes us back to that January the 12th date, which I'm sure uh, you had many discussions about on the show, when we had this Saturn, Pluto, right. um, Sun, Mercury conjunction all taking place in Capricorn at 22 degrees. And that was taking place in the 61st gene key. And so 64th, 61st gene key, the shadow is psychosis. So this means whatever's happening out in the world isn't actually the truth of what we are really being experienced, experiencing. When I asked Richard Rudd what he felt about that conjunction, he said <laughs> it's the return to magic. Hmm. And it's about finding our own inner truth. 
So what it was from a, an astrological point of view was the end of the abuse of power. And if you remember, right around that time, Trump fired a, a missile into Iraq, uh, which mm -hmm. killed an Iranian leader. And that could have triggered a third world war. But it didn't. And it didn't because this abuse of power was being uh, brought to an end, and it was being brought to an end by the return of the sacred feminine. Because the sacred feminine would not allow a third world war to take place. Mm -hmm. So we know that the good guys were winning because that didn't trigger a war. Now, what's happening right now in this very moment as we speak is that conjunction is now being triggered again. Saturn has moved on um, from that conjunction, but now Mars has come in to join it. So now we've got a Mars-Jupiter-Pluto uh, conjunction happening right this, this, this time as we speak. Now, this has got potential for real um, adversarial warrior-type energy uh, in this conjunction right now. So I, I personally believe right now we are in the peak intensity of what is happening out in the world. And this is why we need to hold to our peace and calm. And, and, and this very early this morning, we had the new moon in Aries, which is all about the warrior. It's all about the beginning. It's all about the new journey, setting off on a new journey. So that new journey, we want to take those energies and we want to return to magic. We want to find our own inner truth and follow the journey on. Now, absolutely fascinating for me was Saturn has moved on from that conjunction, but it's now right at the end of Capricorn. It's like sitting right on the transition from Capricorn to Aquarius. Um, and that means it's in the 60th gene key. And the 60th gene key shadow is limitation, and Saturn is all about contraction. So what we're seeing in the world right now is this amazing contraction where everybody is being sent home to be mm -hmm. still at home, but actually it means we're all coming together. It's a very strange paradox. It and of is. course, the gene, the gene keys are all about paradox. So we're being <laughs> right. confined, but we're also becoming globally more connected. Yes. And Yes. And within that 60th gene key is the miracle. It's mm -hmm. going beyond any limitations at all. The shadow is limitation and the sitting is, is justice. It's the true justice. It's what, what really should be happening. And so Saturn is now going to come into a conjunction with Mars next weekend, March 31st, and right at zero degrees Aquarius. So this is like the beginning of this new age. The, the, the dawning of the age of Aquarius beginning in Aries. But it also has a military connotation. So I would not be surprised if there is some form of military uh, exercise or some sort of military activity take place as this week unfolds into the March 31st, right the last day of the month. So again, I don't know any details, but I just, again, astrologically, that, that would make sense. Right. What we need what we need to do, though, is to transcend all of that and not focus on it, just be aware of it. We, we do want to be aware of what's going on, mm -hmm. but as soon as we feel any uh, panic, any right. anxiety, agitation, we need to step out of it. Um, and one of the things I wanted to mention very, very importantly is the, the Gene Key profile for today, which you can, you can find the profile for any day of any time. So I always check in you know, when I'm doing a show with you on the day of, uh, of our, our show, I always look into the profile. And the profile for today in the SQ, which is the heart of the whole profile, this is for everybody on the planet right now, is the 19th gene key. And the 19th gene key is the gene key for those people who have this gift called synesthesia, which is where your senses are expanded so you have this greater awareness and you may even find that your senses will cross over each other um, mm -hmm. so you can smell color you can taste mm -hmm. um, different you know fragrances it, it's just mm -hmm. it's got this beautiful energy mm -hmm. and why it's important for people to understand is because we are then as those sensitive people the 19th I have the 19th jinky in my profile my own personal profile so it means that we pick up on the collective energies that are around. So right now there's this massive collective fear. There's this almost reptilian brain survival mechanism that's kicked in. 
And so, although you may not be yourself dropping into that place of fear, there's this collective fear around us. And if you are out and about and you have to go to the store for food or whatever, you may well pick up this energy when you're there. So it's very, very important to realize and recognize that there is this collective fear that you may, it may not be yours, but you may be picking it up. Mm-hmm. So what we need to do then is to drop back into our personal space, come home to ourselves within, and take some deep breaths and relax and recognize what it is. As soon as we are aware of what it is, everything changes. So I really want to encourage, uh, first of all, people to be very aware of their own feelings, very aware of what's happening around them, very aware of how much news and how much information you're taking in, and to limit that to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and if, if possible, I know it's going to be difficult, more and more difficult to do so, but if possible, to spend some time out in nature with Mother Earth. Yes, Because Definitely. one of the things you said, which is really important, is this incredible energy that's coming through to support us. Mm-hmm. And I want to talk about two things. Um, one is the energy coming down from on high and also the energy coming up from below because they're both here to support us unbelievably powerfully. So a couple of well-known psychics, Paddy Cota Robles um, mm-hmm. and Sandra Walter have both talked about the opening of the 13th Gateway, which is a great cosmic gateway to bring through higher frequency energies from right through our center of our galaxy, even probably coming from beyond our galaxy, coming down through our own uh, sun, our physical sun. And Sandra Walter talked about this opening through the sun, which comes as a, it actually comes through the star system Sirius, which is absolutely magnificent in the night sky right now. If you can go out on a clear night and look at Sirius, which is down to the southwest of Orion's belt, some people think it's a UFO. It's sparkling so brightly blue and red and flashing. And Mm -hmm. so this powerful energy is coming through, and it's coming as a solar flash. So I, I really encourage people when they're outside in the sun to face the sun, open your chest up, open your heart, and just invite these higher frequency energies coming down from the mm-hmm. cosmos into exactly. your heart. And, and I can feel it as a pulse. It pulsates through. And some people, will, if their eyes are closed, will see color in, in their third eye. Some people mm-hmm. will just feel this, this uh, really warm, welcoming sensation. And that's coming down from the highest level. And then at the lowest level, we want to recognize that the Schumann resonance is yeah. off the charts. The mm-hmm. Schumann resonance is the natural heartbeat of Mother Earth, and it used to vibrate at 7.8 hertz uh, up until two years ago. It didn't change. It was completely constant. And now it's suddenly peaked up. It went up to 20, 30, 50. On the summer solstice last year, it was 120. And the highest recording I've heard is 157, which was in November, December last year. And it was mm-hmm. really high again this weekend. It keeps peaking and dropping back down, peaking and dropping back down. So Mother Earth is shifting. She's shifting Mm -hmm. in frequency and vibration. And um, the powerful energies coming through from the cosmos are also showering us with this energy. So there's this fantastic opportunity for us to Mm -hmm. raise our own frequency up to the maximum that we can uh, tolerate even uh, to help us make this shift. Because Mother Earth is going through this shift with us. She has made the decision it's time for her to shed all this dark energy and Mm -hmm. elevate herself to a higher frequency. And and, and we're going to be going through this with her. So the more we can tune in to where she is when we're out in nature and just getting a sense of her energy. I've got a, where I live on a property, um, it's a five-acre property with a dense forest and a beautiful reflecting pond. And I go mm-hmm. down to that pond and I just tune in to what she feels like at any one moment. And always the, the birds, the bird shop, the eagles, the ravens, mm-hmm. and now it's the frogs. The frogs are up and about. <laughs> and it's just a, just delightful, just tuning in to, to whatever she's offering us at any one moment in time. So for me, these are the areas to focus. Um, 
and I'll just I'll just say one other thing which I think everybody needs to really understand is that we've been given this opportunity by the world shutting down to really face up to how it's affecting us it will give us a very clear indication of where we are on our journey how are we handling whatever comes up next as a further contraction and how how are we responding to that inside because this shows us very clearly where we are on our journey mm -hmm. and it's a great time for us to do our creative expressions to do our meditations all the stuff that we haven't had enough time to do here's mm -hmm. that great opportunity to do it now it's such a beautiful time with regard to everything that's possible and i love that you really highlighted all of the support that we have from the earth uh, from the divine realms and I love what you said about getting out in nature. I think it's so important right now, Peter. And as you said, open your arms out to the sun and just really invite in all of the higher frequencies into your heart. And um, as you said, it does let us know how exactly where we're at in terms of are we contracting into fear or that survival mode or whatever. And it's an opportunity to really open back up. So you brought up a lot of amazing points and um, a lot of incredible points. And I think what you just said about the creativity, it's so important right now in connecting, connecting not only inward with ourselves, but with our loved ones. You know, we have a lot more time with them. <laughs> yeah. You know, my daughter's home from college. There is no school. Um but she's really tapping into her writing and her creating and, you know, she's 24 and it's beautiful to see, you know, everybody's, um, it's like we're going back to just simple things, um, connecting, creating, um, all of these things, being more still, simplifying. And so, um, one thing I wanted to mention, Peter, um, a lot of people are very familiar with the gene keys and they've heard you on the show before or, you know, in, all the work that you do, but I feel it's important to just give a little brief um, foundation or understanding of the Gene Keys um, for those who might, this might be the first time they've heard about them. Sure, yeah, very happy to do that, yeah. So the Gene Keys was a, a process that uh, came through Richard Rudd, um, started back in 1996, um, and he had two uh, out-of-body awareness experiences where he was completely in the state of ecstatic existence and he was shown uh, in that state exactly how the universe all came together and it came together through the condensing into matter of the higher consciousness through the 64 hexagrams of the Chinese I Ching and that those 64 hexagrams coincided precisely with the 64 codes in our DNA. In other words, all of creation resides within us. And what we are doing through the Gene Keys is unraveling all the blockages that stand in the way of us fully realizing our true divine nature. And so the Gene Key uh, Golden Path is a process where you work through 11 spheres, which are your own personal um, Gene Keys in particular positions, according to where different planetary alignments were when you were born and there are three sequences within the gene key process the activation sequence the venus sequence and the pearl sequence the activation sequence is what's really critical right now because the activation sequence is what gives us our core grounding to be able to handle whatever comes up there are four spheres life's work evolution radiance and purpose and often people are asking, what's my purpose? Why am I here? What, what, what's the point of this journey? That's the purpose right at the bottom of the profile. And right at the top of the profile is your life's work, which is what you're here to do out in the world. So the activation sequence shows us what we are here to do from the inside and how we're going to carry it out on the outside. So when you find this alignment between your inner journey and your outer journey is when you start living a life of contentment. So that's the activation sequence which gives you this very solid, grounded starting position to then dive deeper into your one-on-one -on -one primary relationships. And what is it about the people in your life that trigger you in any way? What is it that people do or say that gets some sort of reaction from you? 
and that sphere then shows you very clearly what it is that you need to look at within yourself because all those people are acting as mirrors back to you for something that you need to see. That's what's called the, the attraction field, which is the entry into the Venus sequence. And then you take this deep dive back through your life into your childhood. And there are three spheres involved, the SQ, EQ, and the IQ. The SQ is the first seven years of life. This is how you create a physical body through all of the vibrational experiences you're having in the womb and when you're born. And whatever happens to you in those first seven years, the most heavy conditioning and programming takes place during that time in our families, not blaming anybody, it's just they did what they thought was best for us at that time. And then we move into the EQ, which is our emotional body development from the age of 8 and 14. So now we move into this... Uh, emotional state when we're going through puberty and trying to relate with our friends and what's happening during that time in our lives and then we move into the IQ which is the age 15 to 21 and so the 15 to 21 time is when our mind is now taking over our intellectual development and so this brings us to this completion at 21 where we should be mature adults but if we haven't dealt with all of that childhood stuff and uh, the, the final step which I'm coming to next, then we appear to be an adult, but actually we've still got some childish behavior inside us, and we're seeing, we're seeing that in the world yeah. right now with many of our political leaders who are really struggling to handle this situation uh, sensibly. So then at the end of the Venus sequence, we end up with what's called the core wound, and the core wound is the moment of your conception when you were conceived by your parents and they imprinted into your DNA the sacred wound of the ancestors. And I've had some absolutely remarkable sessions with people going back through their ancestors to see what is still being carried as a wound within the person today, going back through history, going back through events that took place. First World War, Second World War, Vietnam, all of these situations which led to horrific outcomes for people and how that has impacted their ancestral lineage and how they now are here to clear that wound on behalf of their ancestors. It's the most powerful and wonderful thing that you can do for your ancestral lineage. And that may also include some incarnational lineage of your previous lifetimes. One of the things about this time, Carrie, that I'm feeling really aware of, it's like um, it's a zero point energy where everything that's ever happened is concentrated, this contraction, into this now moment. So people are having lots of past life memories coming up, for example. Things are coming up that need to be set free and, and cleared. And that's in that core wound. It's, it's, it's the most deep and profound um, sphere in the whole transmission. Mm -hmm. And the wonderful thing is, when you clear that wound and you recognize it and you move through it, through that sphere, it leads you into the highest frequency of what you're actually here to do on the planet, which is called your vocation. And that leads you into the final sequence, the pearl sequence, which is now how you bring all of this learning about yourself on the inside and how you bring it up and out into the world and how you're going to um, serve the world, out in the world, from all the learning that you've gained about yourself. And this involves the work that you're going to be doing, whether you're, it's your business whether it's just the way you live in the world, volunteering. But it, it shows you where you need to put your emphasis in the way in which you offer yourself in service. And the last step of the pearl sequence is the pearl, and that sphere is the, is the sphere where you are now living a life of absolute fulfillment, contentment, happiness, uh, whatever's happening in the outer world, because this is an internal reflection, and this is the journey that we're on. And right now, the most important gene key of all is the 55th gene key, which is the gene key which is all about the entry into the age of Aquarius. Mm -hmm. And that's what is happening right now. And I just want to um, quote Richard Rudd here for a moment because this is what he's saying about the current times. He said, whenever we are going through quantum leaps, it always begins with tremors. We have to go through a breakdown mm -hmm. before we can go through the breakthrough. Exactly. There, is no need to, there is no need to feel afraid. Find your core stability within you. I mean, this is obviously the activation sequence. And it takes us into the whirlwind, which is uh, a combination of two gene keys, the 55 and the 49. 
it's called the ring of the whirlwind and that's exactly what we're in right now mm -hmm. so it's about transmuting any fear into love be with it and transmute the fear and um, and and he, the 55th gene key is the only gene key where he actually does some prophecy about the future and it's uh, really interesting to see what he has to say about what is coming uh, in the future and this obviously goes back to when he had that experience of being right. shown shown it all so what the jinkies does then it, um, for me now just looking at what's happening in the world outside and just looking at the profile for today even it just gives you so much insight into how this is happening and how it's going to play out mm -hmm. and how so it's affecting each person individually um, right. and how they're coping with it or how that what's coming up for them I think it's so important right now as you said, to find that core stability, um, especially for individuals who are conscious and awake and who listen to shows like this and other community shows like, you know, that are similar, it's time for all of us to really um, find that core so that we can um, shine instead of shrink, as I like to say at the end of the show um, here <laughs> each time. Yeah. Um, it's so important so, right now, and I, I also love, I just wanted to highlight real quickly what you just said, that there has to be, and there's always a breakdown to a breakthrough, and it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's the dissolving of the old mm -hmm. so the new can emerge, absolutely. Yes. Um, we have a lot of questions about the gene keys. We have a lot of questions about a lot of things, Peter. We're good. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, and for those of you, if, if the Gene Keys are new to you, um, and that may have sounded like a lot of information, um, if you're if you're drawn to um, having a, a session with Peter, he does simplify this. He gives you a lot of information so that um, if it seems like a lot, it, it does get simplified, and it's a very profound experience to have a Gene Key session if you haven't done so already. Um, Peter, have you had um, some unique ones in the last week or two since all of this has been, you know, highlighted well, in the world? Have I ever? Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> and, 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 and what's happening is it's, it's really interesting, but I'm having more and more people coming to me who are themselves extremely gifted spiritually, mm -hmm. um, but not well grounded. And that's the role that I play very effectively for people. I'm an earthling. And most of these people are starlings and they've come from other star systems and have been very uncomfortable living here on the planet. They really don't want to be here. And my role is to let them know that the experience they've come to have is to be human. And w often they will say, for example, that I'm hoping this is my last time around the wheel of karma, you know, <laughs> that this is my last time. And I'm saying, you know what, by the time this is over, you're going to want to be here because it's going to be so beautiful. Oh, so absolutely. Th yeah. this is the way in which I tend to, to look at it. Um, but I mean, I'm just, just yesterday I had a session with a woman who's 84. And when you're 84, you're in your Uranus return. It takes 84 years for Uranus to go around the astrological wheel once. So when you're 84, it's a very, very significant time. So we ended up having this absolutely wonderful time um, talking about her experiences and how this plays into the current moment. And when you begin to see your own profile and aspects of your life and see how it's all been a setup for your success now, mm -hmm. it, it brings this real sense of validation, confirmation, and it's an energetic transmission. So by the end of the session, you feel really uplifted and bright and light. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I've, I've had some extraordinary experiences, but mainly it is bringing, literally bringing people to Earth from those higher realms so that they can live a happy life here on the planet. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I would say the majority of people who listen to this show on a regular basis are star seeds, and they're very, yeah. they're ex yeah, and it's important to have that stability right now, so that they can bring through everything they were intended, they intended to bring through at this time, because they have so many incredible gifts and abilities and strengths that. Um, are meant to be embodied and shared on the planet right now. <laughs> this is the yeah. time. Well, it, well, it's interesting that uh, just we've just moved out of the 46th gene key in the evolution, which is how we evolve. And the 46th gene key, the shadow uh, is seriousness, and it says 
do I feel safe being in my physical body? And that's the question to ask anybody with the 46 gene key. And Richard Rudd would say, the paradox is, you can't reach enlightenment or the state of ecstasy unless you feel totally safe being in your body. So hovering up and outside your head, which is the sixth line which people tend to do, if you don't come down and into the base chakra and feel safe and comfortable within there, you're not going to you're not going to reach your goal in this lifetime. It's another one of these paradoxes that the yeah. deeper down you go, the the more likely you are to reach those heightened states. Yes, yeah, that's what we want to intend for right now is finding that core stability and feeling safe. Um, exactly. Exactly. And so important right now. So I'm going to go to some of our questions in the webcast, and we'll take some live callers as well. Um, Judith uh, said, knowing that all is cyclical, uh, by way of astronomy, approximately how long linear-wise, even though that's what we're leaving, she said, will the rise of this transformation of the feminine become obvious? She said, I ask because there are those of us of an older community who believe this and just have a desire to see this transformation. Um, so what do you feel... Well, Oh, it's, already, it's, it's already happening. I mean, yeah. you, you look back to the Me Too movement, whether you agreed with it or not, it brought out this whole issue with Harvey Weinstein, and, and he's now in jail for 23 years. Um, so clearly the, the Epstein situation with that wonderful woman, Virginia Roberts, who was badly abused by Ghislaine Maxwell mm -hmm. and Epstein, and now this is all up in the field. So women are stepping up to say no more. We're not taking this anymore, and there's loads more that is going to come out. So it's already started happening. How long will it take? It, it depends how readily the collective uh, consciousness accepts this necess necessity for the balancing of the masculine and feminine. But from my perspective as a man, equally important to the rise of the feminine is the rise of the sacred masculine. Yes. And I just want to make this really Balance. important comment, Carrie, because I'm one of them, so I know this. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that men have got to do is relinquish the need to be in control and be the power player in a relationship. So what we need to do as men is to step back and hold sacred space for the feminine to step forward because she carries the intuitive knowing of what needs to happen. And since I've started doing this, my world has changed enormously. I used to be a school principal where I used to have to make all the decisions, all the right decisions, and get hammered for making the wrong decision and all that stuff. And now I just step back and hold space for the women that I work with who know what needs to be done. And so I'm just holding this really solid, grounded space for them to step up. And well, you can relax a little bit more now. <laughs> exactly. And everybody wins because the women feel honored and they're ready to do their work. I can just, as you say, step back and relax and not feel the need to make all the right decisions. Everybody wins. Mm -hmm. And it's only the male energy, and it's not just men, it's, it's women who are also in that masculine energy. Mm -hmm. What it requires is for us just to let go, just to let yeah. go and, 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 and join together in a collaborative approach. But it's already started, there's no question. What we don't want to happen is for it to go out of balance the other way. We, we want to end up in perfect yes. balance, which is what the equinox of this week is all about. It's about mm -hmm. bringing the masculine and feminine to a, in a perfectly balanced, harmonious way. Absolutely. I'm so glad that came up, and I'm grateful for your question because I'm glad all of that came up. As you said, I mean, even for you, you're more relaxed. You're able to do what you do best. But you, everybody, it's about releasing that tension and that resistance so that we can be in a state to bring that that natural creativity forth that we all have and natural intuition and all of our strengths come forward. So good question. Um, okay, let me read another one here. So let me just, can I just add one more thing there, which I yes. think, again, for for the men who are listening, mm -hmm. this, this, this time is another opportunity for us to step into the nurturing role at home. Being the, I'm, getting all the, I'm getting all the shivers here. This is very important. But for the men who are now home and not, not racing around at work to become the nurturer, to allow their feminine side to rise up and, and nurture and care for the people around them in a different way. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> um, as all the, these families are home and together 24-7. <laughs> you know? That's right. Um, 
it's a it's a interesting time so Okay, Soleil says, um, what does the shifting of the Schumann resonance indicate for us? She goes on to ask, are earthquakes and floods to be more expected with this shifting? That's a, that's a, a great question. And I think um, we've already seen the worst of it through the fires in Australia mm-hmm. and the flooding that's taken place. I, think, I, I personally think Mother Earth is already well on in the purging and cleansing that was required. And again, the more that we connect with her in a frequency of loving light, the better. But I think there's been another interesting spin-off that's taken place as a result of everybody being sent home. I don't know if you've picked up this, Carrie, but apparently there's been tremendous pollution clearing taking place in different parts of the world. Dolphins returning to areas where they haven't been. Even the the, the Venice canals clearing of of, Mm -hmm. of all the debris. So I think what we're being shown is that when we behave differently, uh, Mother Earth herself can relax. She can not get into this state of tension, and she can open herself up to a very rapid healing. I don't think we need to project onto the future what's happened in the past. I do believe that once we make this shift and we do come into this balanced, harmonious approach, that all the uh, challenges of mother earth herself and all the pollution and toxicity will clear much faster than we believe is possible Uh, again not making any excuses for people who are not treating the earth properly but i do believe that once we make this shift the earth will clean up much faster than expected i think this virus will as well by the way i think this virus will clear up much faster than people think it's done its job already agreed agreed um so many questions. There are a lot of very specific questions about um, the gene keys. Uh, let me ask one more general question before that. Um, Shannon said, do you have any suggestions for how to get a truly deep breath during these chaotic times? Any exercise or mantra? Well, the key thing is that most of us, particularly when we are under stress, we breathe too shallow. And so what I would really encourage people is to do some very deep belly breathing and to get really when when you breathe in because again in our fashionable vanity world we tend to want to hold our belly in but when we breathe in we actually want to extend our belly out as far as we can so we want to breathe in and get right down to the base of the lungs and then just hold for just a comfortable few seconds and then breathe all the way out. So when you breathe out, when you think you've emptied yourself out, just push out a little bit further. Uh, Again, not straining, not pushing, and then just again, just breathe in, but breathe in all the way in so you can feel your lungs filling up right down in in the belly. And recognizing whenever we're under stress that we tend to just breathe through the upper chest But our lungs right now are very, very important in terms of this uh, immunity from from this uh, particular virus, is to keep our lungs as expanded as possible. So it's a great question, but just by very deep breathing right down into the belly uh, on a regular basis, particularly when you are feeling a bit agitated. But I also want to just uh, just jump in here um, with uh, the work of Joe Dispenza, because mm-hmm. Jody Spencer actually measures the immunoglobin A uh, amount inside the body, uh, which that is what controls our immune system, how much immunoglobin A we have. And he's done actual experiments where if people spend 10 minutes three times a day going into this space of love and gratitude in our hearts and doing this deep, calm breathing, then the immunoglobin levels go up in our system tremendously. I I think he had 120 people doing this for three days and their immunoglobin values went up 50%. So the best way, to, apart from your supplements and whatever else you're doing uh, in terms of your uh, uh, protection, just by dropping into a meditative space three times a day, your immune system is going to come up to a higher frequency. Yes, I and we had said we were going to talk about the best ways to protect ourselves from illness, and that's it. That's uh, staying in a state of gratitude as often as possible and meditating, and and we have the time for that. <laughs> so ten minutes three times a day um, yep. is well worth the uh, you know that expenditure of time. Um, 
with regard to our health and supporting our immune system and all of that and staying calm um, during <laughs> these challenging yeah. times. And coming together in groups like this, I get so many emails, Peter, from people after the show about how, you know, it's just such a a relief to come together and, and feel this high vibration of love and support and possibility and potential and opportunity rather than the opposite, which is out there in the mainstream media, <laughs> generally well, There's speaking. this uh, wonderful heart coherence that you create mm -hmm. by having a regular listenership and by your own energy, then everybody comes into this perfect heart coherence to balance off everything that's happening in the world on a negative level that this group of people coming together through the heart just transforms and transmutes all of that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people are expressing how um, everyone who is at home, um, I've seen probably 10 people write in about what they're doing with their time in terms of their creativity flowing. The latest oh, came in from uh, Gloria saying, Greetings, Carrie and Peter. I'm discovering an opening in my creative side. My poetry is flowing. Staying home has brought me home. What a gift. Ah, yes. <laughs> right? Um, it's an opening for all of us. And um, let's see. Uh, Wendy, um, hi, Carrie and Peter. How will and how does 5G play into this? We talked oh, about my this goodness. earlier last week. Oh. <laughs> That's another. Well, oh, I'll, let you, yeah. I'll let you respond, though. Yeah. Well, I, what I do know is that uh, in Wuhan, they just put in 10,000 5G towers before this epidemic broke out. And another place where they put in a bunch of them uh, was in northern Italy. So um, the 5G, from my perspective, is a deadly weapon. Um, it, it disrupts the water molecules in our system and, again, compromises the immune system. So I think you'll find where the worst epidemics uh, are going to play out is where 5G has been recently installed. And I did read about a 5G tower that was placed, believe it or not, on a school, an elementary school in California, and all the kids got sick and they were forced to take it down. But there is also some evidence, and again, I don't know the truth of this, that um, this time at the schools where they're all closed down is in the states is when they're putting 5g towers in so people want to be very vigilant around their neighborhood to see if there's any activity of these vans and trucks installing 5g but it's sadly it's another part of the of the dark side up in operation no doubt at all what would you say to people who um do see these towers in their you know their local their surroundings what well, is your best to... advice they need to go to their councils and make it really clear that the research uh, is already showing, A, they don't work very well, and B, that they cause uh, damage to the immune system. They need to get them out. We all need to get them out of everywhere. Um, so it needs to get a collaborative neighborhood approach uh, in those areas. Uh, and also they're doing it, you know, behind the scenes when there's no one watching. It's it's terrible. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, there's and, definitely, definitely mm -hmm. a connection. I, I wouldn't personally say that, it causes the virus, but I would say it compromises people's immune system. Absolutely. Agreed. Agreed. Um, there are a lot of interesting, more broader questions that I'm asking you first, then we'll go into the gene key um, specifics. Um, Kimberly says, uh, much gratitude for the relevant discussion today. What are your thoughts on the possibility of digital currency? <laughs> We're going all well, over the again, place here, Peter. I know, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, again, I think, you know, one of the things this this situation, I mean, even at a local store now, you can't use uh, paper money. You've got to use cards. So there's definitely a movement towards that taking place. Again, I don't know ultimately uh, how that's going to work out, but it's definitely heading in that direction. Uh, and we have to be very careful uh, when, every, when everything becomes electronic, um, I think it's well worth having some uh, silver and gold stashed away. Uh, the price has dropped recently, so it's a good time if you've got any spare cash to invest in, in the real stuff rather than the paper or electronics. So, again, I think we have to be really, really careful about how this is playing out. But I don't have any specific answers to that one. Yeah. Um, lots on everybody's mind, <laughs> clearly. Um, okay, Peter, I want to take some live callers. Um, Again, press star 2 to raise your hand. We have a lot of hands up. Um, if you have questions about what we're talking about or the gene keys, um, Peter, are you ready for some live callers? 
Absolutely, yeah. Okay. All right. First caller that I'm going to is area code 714. 714, you're live with us. Oh, hi. This is Barbara. <laughs> Thank you hi, so Barbara. Much for hi. You know, I I know I need to speak to Peter, but I don't know what I have to ask. So maybe he could just tune into the energy and tell me what I need to hear and what we need to hear. I don't know. But I, uh, I you know, I, I deal with fears like everybody else, I think, to especially to not try to feel the collective feelings as an empath that I am. Any guidance, so, yeah, Peter? For, yeah. So, yeah, so first of all, I'm not a psychic uh, or a medium. Yeah. My, my, my work I involves working with... Uh, the profiles and tuning into the people and giving them their best advice. So, um, so that's a, a tricky question for me to answer. But to answer the empath question, what's really important is to create boundaries around yourself mm-hmm. and not get drawn into any codependency, uh, any neediness either being placed upon you by others or you feeling that need for a sense of security. So the key thing for any empath right now is creating very clear boundaries about what's mine and what's yours and what's everybody else's. That's a good point right now. <laughs> Barbara, um, yes. how, is that helpful? Yes. yes. <laughs> to, to get to, uh, I mentioned earlier the 19th Gene Key. If you are involved with the Gene Keys, that is the Gene Key that we're talking about it's, and it's right in the center of our profile for today so that that codependency that needs to be cleared and clear boundaries created very very important mm-hmm. Barbara um, yeah second great boundary. Advice. thank you <laughs> thank you Barbara blessings to you at thank this you. time and uh, and always so many blessings to both of you thank you Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Um, Sorry, Barbara. Yeah, what a good point. I mean, a lot of people are talking about that right now, Peter, about setting boundaries and um, releasing relationships that are no longer supportive, you know, and not feeling that guilt. And um, and a lot of the soul contracts that have brought people together, um, some it's time they're, you know, time for release with with anything that feels um like it's not beneficial at this time and that's where the boundaries come in so absolutely Let, letting go of everything that's not serving your highest purpose right now that includes people absolutely not feeling guilty mm-hmm. uh, it's, you know everybody's on their own journey and we just allow everybody to be where they are the great news is when you let go of the old uh, your new tribe will start showing up in numbers and that's absolutely. what we're all looking forward to yeah yeah, and you'll feel lighter, brighter, shinier, yeah. happier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, next live caller, um, area code 817. 817, you're live. Hi, thank you for Hi. taking my call. This is Nancy. Hi, Peter. I had a reading with you about a year ago, and it was fabulous. About to do it again. Thank you. Well, thank you. My question, you're welcome. Uh, my question is... Um, for someone who maybe has, you know, I study astrology for, for my one of my hobbies, and um, with Saturn and Pluto and Jupiter all hitting my natal Saturn and my and my Jupiter, with the Gene Keys, would you recommend? Is it similar where you look at transits if, with the Gene Keys with your own chart, or would you focus on the Saturn sphere in your personal Gene Key profile? I think it, it's a good question. I think it's a good it's a good opportunity um, to look at the transits through. So transits normally focused on through astrology. So as you say, the, mm-hmm. the different planets moving through different aspects of your own personal chart. But you can also look at the transits of the of the planets moving through certain gene keys. So as as okay. I just indicated, with those, with that 61st and 60th gene key being really prominent right now if you have either of those gene keys uh, in your profile then those two uh, keys are going to really be impacting you right now and so really really important to get a clear understanding of what those two keys mean so in that sense absolutely yes to, to follow those transits 
Okay, so it's not saying look at the rapture sphere and whatever that one represents. Because I remember when I had the reading, each one represents a different planet, Venus, That's Jupiter, right. and yeah. such. And so would you, would you read the gene key that Jupiter's in today and at the, in conjunction with where your individual Jupiter is in your personal profile? So okay, so you're, you're asking a, a fairly deep question, but I'll give you a good answer. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> so, okay. so, no, 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 don't apologize. It's good. <laughs> So in the in the current situation, uh, Jupiter and Mars are both in the 61st gene key, and okay. they are positioned because Mars uh, is it's when you are born, Mars is is uh, if it was today would be in the EQ, the emotional quotient, and Jupiter okay. is in the pearls. So you would look at those two spheres um, where those two, where those two. Um, planets Mars and Jupiter are conjunct in your own profile and look at what gene keys you have in your EQ and your pearl and and look at those four aspects together to give you some some insight does that make sense to you ah. yes that's what I wanted to know the two went together the two shall meet mm-hmm. yeah there you go Nancy <laughs> well, thank you so much <laughs> thank okay. you, Nancy. I appreciate it thank you Mm-hmm. All right. Take care, Nancy. Um, Peter, this is a good time to let people know, and then we'll go back to some questions. Um, uh, Peter's offer for this community is a, a Gene Key uh, counseling session with him. So for those of you who are interested, um, this is a special um, price point that he is offering at. So you can find it at straighttalkforthesoul.com. In our marketplace, you will see Peter's smiling face. Uh, click on that and you will see this offer. Um, there are also a couple of bonuses that Peter is including. Um, there's a bonus meditation setting our intentions for the next six months, as well as a bonus video, which is really important, Peter, which is understanding your gene key profile. Um, that video really gives you an introduction to the gene keys profile. And because a lot of it may sound like a different language when you're listening to Peter and he gets into the specifics, but um, <laughs> it won't it won't seem as complicated once you get into it, right, Peter? Well, the great news is that uh, introductory video, which is about 20 minutes, saves 20 minutes of time when we have the one-on-one session. Yes. So, so long as the person has studied it, we can go straight into their own profile and look at the different elements of the profile. I'll also just say that the other thing that's happened more recently, because of the times, I think, uh, people who've had a session with me are coming back for a second session uh, to get a deeper dive into where they are right now in their lives. And having looked at the initial uh, process, beginning to look more deeply into specific spheres and particular gene keys. So that's a a thing. If people have had sessions with me before, uh, to consider having another session where we can take a deeper dive. Right. Um... Yes, so describe for people who have not had a session how it works. Um, I mean, you encourage them clearly to watch this video first. Um, But then, I mean, you send them their information. Just give a brief synopsis of what takes place. Sure, yeah, yeah. So basically, I need their date of birth, location, and time. And from that, I will generate the Gene Key profile and send it with the – and you'll send – through the package, the intro video. So before the session, people don't need to do anything else but have their profile in front of them and to, and to watch that introductory video. And then when we start the session, which I normally use Zoom because that's a very easy uh, record, um, I ask people right at the beginning what their intentions, hopes and wishes are for the session. And I'll ask them questions to do with their health, uh, their work, their relationships, and what their um, highest wish and desire is for themselves in this lifetime. So as I'm listening to them explaining things, I'm looking at the profile. And this is where my gift resides. Rather than being psychic uh, directly, I'm using their profile. It's them. Their profile is who they are. I'm listening to what they're saying, and I start piecing together the puzzle of how this all fits into their profile. And the real benefit is you can read the book that Richard Rudd created you can go on to online and do all the different things but what what is unique for me is i see these compelling interactions within their own profile where things connect together and make sense where different gene keys play off each other 
And so we can start you know, beginning to get a deeper understanding of how and why things have happened. And what blows my mind constantly, Carrie, is how accurate it is. And I can ask a specific question about something that happened to you at a certain age uh, where you lost some confidence in yourself or you know, what happened at this point in your life. And it's quite remarkable that there's always something there. And even people who don't see that immediately will often mm-hmm. see later in the session or even um, afterwards will send me an email to say, oh, I'd forgotten about this and this is, oh, that's what happened there. And suddenly there's this wonderful aha moment. And from my point of view, the most important thing is that they have the aha moment, not me. Because when it's, right. your, uh, when it's your aha moment, it means a great deal more to you than it does from, coming from me. And Richard Rudd is really big on the recognition that we must not do this for other people. What we are doing is creating the container through which people can gain this greater understanding of themselves from the inside out. And that's the key to this. And when you have these wonderful breakthrough moments, which can yeah. come after the breakdown, <laughs> I was it's just going to use that word, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just phenomenal. It is. I remember when we had mine, um, there were some very powerful um, breakthrough moments that I realized in the moment. And it was, it was, uh, yeah, certainly pretty powerful. Neat. It's yes. pretty neat. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay. So, Peter, um, I'll take a couple more live questions, but I want to dive into a few of these uh, specifics in the webcast. Um This was an important one. Where did it go? Okay, Uh, Dana said, I don't have a 46, but I never felt safe in my body. I have a 47.2 in EQ. What do we do to feel safe in the body? Right. So um, almost certainly, Dana, you're going to have some line sixes. So the 46 is the gene key that governs uh, how safe we feel in our body. But the sixth line in the hexagram is uh, the crown chakra and the third eye chakra. So it means that when we are under stress, there's a tendency for us to go up and out and leave our bodies. And that's when we don't feel safe in our body. So the grounding that's required is to very gently and very slowly and very patiently bring your conscious awareness down from the top of your head and very slowly and surely bring it down your spinal column and get right down into the base, into the coccyx, into the base of the body, and just all you have to do is feel safe being there. Just bring that conscious awareness all the way down into the base of your body. And you've probably never been there. If you you don't feel safe in your body, you've probably never actually been that deep down in your body but it requires patience and slowing down and feeling into what it feels like to be there and you may feel some resistance at a particular point so I can tell you now if you've got the 47.2 in your EQ that's your emotional body and the line 2 is the sacral chakra and it contains within the shadow of the second line is denial and the 47th gene key is a real challenging gene key because It's the one that contains all the ancestral anguish and ancestral karma. So what you would also want to do is to look at your core wound to see what the ancestral wounding is that you're working with. But the 47 is all about that ancestral wounding. And so that denial means you almost certainly won't allow your consciousness to go below the second chakra. So I'm going to guess when you do that, a meditation practice that you're going to put it's a resistance point that down in that second chakra where it, your your body won't want you to go any deeper and you don't want to force it but you do want to have some determination in getting down deeper into your body the great news about the 47th gene key is that when you can do that the gift is transmutation and the gift is asking you to become the witness of all of your family wounding without getting entangled in it and just watching it lift off with ease and grace, with love in your heart for all that's happened through your family lineage. And the final step in the 47th gene key in the city state, the highest state, is the transfiguration. And the transfiguration is this most beautiful, wonderful inner light that begins to shine out in the world. 
So it's what it's it's the case, Carrie, that the deepest, darkest shadows lead to the greatest wonderful gifts. It's another one of those uh, amazing paradoxes. And the 47th is one of those. It's very much to do with the shamanic underworld journey. And Dana, you want to try and get down there and, and experience that aspect of you deep in the body. Okay. Dana, I hope that you heard that. You're welcome to write back in. Let us know if you, um, let us know. If, hopefully you did hear that. Um, okay, Lynn. She said, my SQ is 20.3, culture is 20.6. What do you think of this, Peter? Okay, so the 20th gene key, it's interesting. It's great that these questions are coming out because the 20th gene key shadows superficiality. It's Again, it's about not being grounded. And the, okay. the, city, the highest, the highest mm-hmm. expression of this gene key is presence. And there are two aspects of presence. One is time and one is space. So what I've just described for Dana is also true for the 20th gene key. But in addition, um, the, the key piece here is paying attention to when your mind is drifting off into the past or into the future and not being in the present moment. And obviously, when we're planning things for the future, that's necessary. When we're reflecting on our past to clear the past, that's necessary. But in our day-to-day life, being very aware of our thoughts and being in this present moment. And the great thing about the 20th gene key is it leads to some self-assurance. Now, the third line in the SQ means as a little girl, all you wanted to do is to play and have fun. And typically, that didn't happen if it's in the shadow of the line three. So the great news is this is your moment of birth. So now you can rebirth yourself back out into the world and have lots of fun and play and feel really good about that in the present moment. I have a couple of grandsons, and I really enjoy my time with them being in the present moment, diving on the floor and mm-hmm. just playing and do whatever they do, I just join in with them. It's great fun. And that's being <laughs> that's being present. Now, the sixth line in the culture means that you have a very clear understanding of how systems do and don't work. So when you're fully grounded and fully present, you can see the way in which old systems did not function well. So one of your roles in the future is going to be to see how we can create efficient systems in this new world in the future. It's an important role to have. Hmm. Okay, Uh, Lynn. Lynn, I really appreciate you. Lynn is an active member of this sacred circle. And uh, you have important things to do, Lynn. (laughs) So thank you for the question. And Peter, thank you for that. Okay, I'm going to go through a few of these other specific questions. Okay, Um, Olivia, in evolution sphere, I have evolution 55.3, freedom, freedom, victimization, line three, energy and experience. Any insights? Oh, loads. (laughs) We could spend an hour on this one. Um, so the line three in the evolution, the, the um, evolution and life's work are always the same line. And this means that you came into this world ex- planning to experience what it's like to be human. So when I was talking earlier about coming down into this experience of being a human being, that's what the third line is about. And it tends to create um, all sorts of challenges around you. It's almost like you're at the center of your own soap opera, all the ups and downs of what it's like to be human. So the key thing about the line three, the energy and experience, is saying you're having loads of experiences of what it's like to be human, both yourself and the people around you. So don't get entangled into the emotional aspects of that. Just witness it for what it is, because you're gaining wisdom by watching what it's like to be human and just accumulating that knowledge and that wisdom and that awareness. But the 55th gene key is, as I said just a little bit earlier, the most important gene key of this age. So what you're being asked to do is to look deeply into yourself and whenever you've played the role of the victim in your life and let all of that go and set yourself free. And that freedom that is both the gift and the city is an internal freedom. So once you let go of all of those times in your life where you felt um, unjust or being the victim, being taken advantage of, and let all of that go, set yourself free and then become very aware when you have that tendency to step back into victimhood. And we know when we are, whenever we're blaming or complaining, 
about what's mm-hmm. happening in our lives because when we're blaming or complaining, we're giving our power away to whatever it is we're talking about. And we all do it, so we need to catch ourselves in that moment. Pause, breathe, slow down, and step out of that victimhood. And, and you are a representative, you are an archetype for stepping into this Aquarius age. So the more work you can do on setting yourself free, the more you assist all of humanity in doing the same. Not putting any pressure on you at all because it's just for you to do for yourself, but it will inevitably play a role in taking us into this next level of uh, human existence. Hmm. Olivia, thank you for that question. Peter, thank you. Um, Let's see, uh, Therese. Any feedback for those of us who have the 55 gene key in our profile? I've just done it. That was the 55th. Exactly. That, that. was 55? Yeah. Um, oh, you're right. Right. Yes. Yes. It's done. It's done. <laughs> yes, it is done. There you go. I'm sorry. There's probably 100 questions in here, so I'm going through trying to pick out. Um, that must have been an important one if I went to it. Um, well, it's, a, it, it's the most important one. There's, the only other one that would be as important is the 22nd gene key, which is about bringing an end to human suffering. And so right now we're right in that place of clearing out. This virus, I, I do believe, is clearing out all sorts of uh, lower frequency energies. If you can imagine that energies latch onto each other, so this virus is like cleaning up. It's like clearing everything out of the system. And that's mm-hmm. the 22nd gene key of bringing an end to human suffering and facing uh, the deepest wounds that we have to carry, to set them free and not avoiding them or denying them, but to actually embrace them and set them free. And that's the 22nd. So the 55 and the 22 would be the two most significant jinkies at this time. Wonderful. (laughs) Glad they came up. No no, uh, accident they came up. Um, Dana just said, uh, wow, I'm so very moved, very deep and powerful insights, spot on, 100%. Thank you so much. What a great show. Blessings. Um, Lovely. uh, Lynn said, thank you so much for taking my question. I feel present and happy in my body and surroundings. I feel content and definitely see changes needed. Amy just said, I just love Peter and everything you're both saying and covering today. Uh, I've been very discerning of what is going on, taking the time to contemplate and meditate and connect as we heal the earth together. Um, You're speaking directly to what I've been feeling, doing, and thinking. Thank you tremendously for confirming and answering so many of the heart calls and questions that we light workers have. Um, A lot of people are appreciating big chills yeah. on that one <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's i just got them too yes um it's so important peter that we come together and feel empowered and um i could take you know numerous more questions i think we've covered a lot i want to highlight some of the things that you said earlier about you know we have to go through a breakdown for this breakthrough um also that right now finding that core stability and feeling safe is so important um we covered a lot of reassuring um, components of what's going on right now, Peter. So as we start to wrap up, what are you feeling is significant to either recap or um, share before we uh, say goodbye? Well, thank you. Yeah, I think I think just to be the observer, be the witness of what's happening, not buying into anything in particular, uh, and just and just allowing it to play out. And then just continuing to do your own inner work. Uh, As we said, just really being aware of how everything is affecting you and how stable you have managed to remain and how steady you've been through this process. And always going back to center and going back into your heart, dropping down into the belly and just breathing deeply and slowly and just recognizing that we are part of a master plan and we're only partway through the movie. We're getting into the pretty heavy hitting part of the movie right now. But we are going to come through and have a major celebration at the end. So start celebrating right now. Mm-hmm. Celebrate the fact that this is definitely happening. It is on. And thank you all <laughs> for agreeing to be part of this crazy journey. <laughs> what an adventure, Peter. <laughs> I'm yeah, glad to do it with you and all of us. Um, your work is so significant, Peter, and I always appreciate 
just the insights and the information blended with all of the compassion and the love that that I want to say if someone hasn't had a, a session with you that you bring into every session, um, which makes people feel very safe. You know, that's come up today, feeling safe, and you certainly provide that um, that setting when you work with people. So, well, thank um, you for that because that, that I've been doing this work for a very long time now, and right from day one that has always been my primary aim is to create the most safe and secure container for, mm -hmm. for people to share within. Well, you've done it. Um, <laughs> you've done it. So, Peter, thank you and blessings to you as we celebrate uh, the freedom that is emerging uh, for all of us. And um, I know you'll be back soon. Um, I love having you back. So thank well, you for everything. Yeah. Well, thank you, for Carrie, for carrying the flag because you're doing that so beautifully. So thank you. I appreciate that, Peter. And... So to everybody who's joined us, thank you, thank you, thank you for the gift of your time, your love, your openness, uh, your presence today. We appreciate you, and I hope that you received the insights and the messages that will benefit you most at this time. And as we bring today's show uh, to a close, I've been highlighting this. Please be kind to one another. And in addition to thinking thoughts about thriving through all of this, which we are and we will, and we, we so will do this, um, take any precautions necessary and let's just do whatever we can to promote a sense of empowerment and relief in our um, our inner communities, our homes, and in the world right now. Let's turn our focus and attention to kindness, warmth, wellness, and love, solutions, opportunities. Um, remember that resisting anything or fearing anything really does compromise your immune system. So let's spread love and empowering information. That is the key to emerging from this planetary event uh, successfully and gracefully and beautifully as we intended. So, And I also want to mention, remember to notice the shifts happening. Notice the changes. Um, notice all the beautiful things emerging and celebrate it now. As Peter said, let's celebrate now. So remember that you are brilliant and resilient and I appreciate you. Thank you for going on this adventure with Peter and myself. Um, I am sending waves and waves of love and light and appreciation uh, directly from my heart to yours. May you feel it, receive it, and please offer it to everyone you encounter, energetically, physically, uh, wherever you happen to be in the world. And as always, until next time, please give yourself full permission to shine instead of shrink, express instead of suppress, and own that amazing, powerful glow of yours. I'll see you back here in this playground of light next time, everybody. Bye-bye.